Do you feel like when you were born Muslim, do you have this thing like, oh, um, there's like a, a greener pasture over there. Maybe, you know, why am I following my religion? Why can't I be like those guys go out and have fun? I've always grown up in a secular world. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I wasn't put through the madrasa or anything like that. So naturally, I've been on technically both sides. So the hijab mm-hmm. was also a very recent thing, you know, that I actually put this on after we got married, right? So for a very long time, I was um, actually facing a somewhat uh, identity crisis because I really wanted to fit into the mold. Uh, but yet at the same time, uh, deep down, I still want to retain myself, my identity as a Muslim woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So whether or not I, f- I actually feel that there's actually a greener pasture, yes, definitely. And that's why I wanted to fit into the mold. I wanted to be the same as everyone. I didn't want to mm-hmm. be different. So I think... I think at the end of it, um, you know, it just it just became one of those things that I had to go through in life in order to realize that um, that's not who I am and that's not who I want to be because that realization came on later. Mm-hmm. But there's definitely a point in my life where I wanted to be like the rest. I wanted to be successful like the rest. I wanted to be seen as this woman who's not bounded by, you know, like I'm a different Muslim woman. I'm not like. A, mm-hmm. uh, a stereotype typical Muslim woman I think that was that was what I grew up with I did not want to see as one of the Malay Muslim women in Singapore that was something I was trying to like stay away from so um, can you describe a bit more about the what exactly is Malay Muslim women <laughs> for some who don't know lah, okay okay so yeah. I'm not sure why but <laughs> okay actually I know the reason why but <laughs> basically this Malay Muslim term has been coined in Singapore for a very very long time for some reason, whenever you're Muslim, you're definitely Malay in Singapore, mm-hmm. right? It's always Malay Muslim. It's never like Chinese Muslim or like um, Indian Muslim. So the moment you're Muslim, you're Malay. So the thing is, because I was, I'm of mixed heritage background, right? So when I was not wearing the hijab, I was always, always uh, mistaken for a Chinese girl, right? So the moment I put this cloth on my head, immediately... Malay, you know, and, <laughs> and I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be classified as that because um, the narratives that surrounding the race. Um, because I had a lot of friends who are non-Muslims who you know are, are are of the majority race in Singapore. The narrative is that Malays are lazy. We don't like to work. We're always on MC. You know, uh, we just cannot work lah. Basically, <laughs> you would know lah. You were from the other side, right? So, so not until you you actually you know. I actually got married you understood the yeah. challenges that I faced right yeah. so um, as a minority I did not want to be lumped together as together with you know this this narrative of you know being lazy mm-hmm. and you know and stuff like that so naturally I tried to gravitate towards becoming uh, a lot more westernized uh, trying to associate my identity more with the Chinese side of things because I couldn't I couldn't just bring myself to want to become a Malay Muslim woman at a very young age for mm. some reason yeah so uh, so yeah so that was the crisis that I was you know internally having because I was brought up in Muslim family right Muslim household you know and things like that but when you go out like when I went out I didn't want to be associated with all of that mm-hmm. by the way uh, for even for Chinese Muslims uh, who wear the hijab they are also mistaken as Malay <laughs> even though they are Chinese yeah. So okay. Yeah. Uh, my question: How did you eventually overcome this hurdle of an identity crisis? I think it was a process. Uh, I think it came to a point where I stopped caring about what other people think. But that definitely was a process. It did not happen overnight. It was something that I had to learn to sort of to overcome. You know, over time, after I met you, actually. So so before I met you, I was very much a. Uh, Muslim by name kind of girl like you know I pray when I want I okay, this is personal but I guess I just share in case some of you might read it so I pray whenever I want to sometimes you know I don't really place importance to to religion I would say at that point but I think after I met you um, you basically reintroduced Islam to me oh, as a revert as a revert you, re- you introduced Islam to me so I saw Islam in a very different lens 
like from a perspective of someone who's coming in from the outside because I followed you for classes every week and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So when we were young, you know, naturally my parents send me for classes. You know, we go for classes. We go for classes because our parents tell us to go for classes, <laughs> right? We pray because our parents tell us to pray. Right? Who can relate? <laughs> Nobody thinks that oh, I pray because you know I am for the love of Allah. You know, uh, like you know, I'm seeking His forgiveness. No, nobody does that. I mean, like well, I I don't know about other people, but when I was young, I was like, okay, I pray because mommy asked me to pray lah. I pray lah. You know, sometimes you know when you're young, you just lock yourself in the room. Mommy say pray, yeah, pray. Day. Actually, inside not praying ah. <laughs> you know, so things like that. I I'm sure those who are born Muslims have gone through this this phase. Okay, so um so yeah, so that was me for for a very long for, for a very long time. So when I saw, uh, when I started seeing the religion in different lands, and I think when I started to um, learn more about it uh, from that that angle and that perspective coming in, uh, it sort of made me realize that um, I think it came to a point with maturity as well that you know this life is just we care too much about what other people think of us, and that was basically. What set me free? Because I stopped caring about what people thought of us, or of of me, and that's when I thought it doesn't matter lah. You know, whatever I do. So in fact, after I put this on and I met one of my ex colleagues, you know, he he was my boss. The first question he asked me, "Why are you wearing the hijab now?" He asked me this question because he I don't blame him, mm-hmm. you know, because I was I wasn't wearing it before. So you know, he was like, "Is it because you're married now, so you're wearing it?" <laughs> Common mm-hmm. typical, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like, "No, I wear it because you know I'm required to wear it." Mm-hmm. Say, so, "Yeah, but you know, people are going to see you different." So then I asked him this question, but I'm still the same Shahira, right? You see, see me as the same Shahira, and he's like. Yeah, but that's because I know you. But somebody who doesn't know you is gonna view you differently, you know. So I said, it doesn't matter. Oh, uh, mashallah! I think uh, so. what you shared was uh, really insightful. Mm-hmm. And uh, by the way, guys, this is not scripted. I don't even discuss this with, uh, today. I just found out all this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I mean, what other identity crisis are, are men and women different? Do they face the same or, or not? I'm not sure actually. I've never had this conversation with a male Muslim guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, mostly, mostly with Muslim women, and I think mm-hmm. um, because our identities are very st- stuck in your face. Because the Muslims wear a hijab, right? So naturally, you know, men, if you want, you, you don't. That's not written on your face. That you're Muslim or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So except unless men grow a beard, lah, maybe they start to think. Yeah, but then I mean, there are a lot of men who are not who have beards, right? He might be a hipster, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's very. It looks like the the women uh, on a physical front face uh, a lot more dif- challenge because they carry their faith all around their head, right? Yeah. Sort of like they wear a scarf to say I'm a Muslim. Yeah. Uh, so people kind of have that thinking like expectation. And imagine if you're an ustaza or even a madrasa student. And you know, you, I think you have even more societal kind of ex- expectation. So this pressure you face is it like mainly from uh, family members or the you know the own Muslim community, or is it also from outside? Because I can expect that people, when they hear or see you're Muslim, they expect you to know certain things or be a certain way, and maybe they think you're a representative of Islam. So do you feel a pressure from like non-Muslims that you might do something wrong and it might reflect badly on? all other Muslims. Does this fear or pressure exist?